Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Amy Harrell Podcast. I have Amy Harrell here on the line with us and the wonderful Shane McKenzie. Welcome, folks. Hi. Hey, welcome, welcome. Glad to be here. Good to see you again, Shane. It's been a long time, and I know today's topic is going to be juicy. As we talk about coaches and consultants, what the heck is the difference, Shane? (laughs) <laughs> it's been said before that they're the same, and that is absolutely wrong. So I'm glad that you're offering up this question so we can have just a real honest dialogue about it. What is the difference between coaches and consultants? A consultant is someone who can tell you exactly what needs to be done, when it needs to be done by, to get a very specific outcome that you're after. That's what a consultant mm-hmm. does. They give you a roadmap and process to be able to follow to achieve an outcome. A coach is someone who, in light of that plan that you have, in light of where you are and where you want to go, helps you become the person that that plan demands that you become before it will give you the results that it offers up. Does this make sense? So a consultant is going to come and be able to tell you, this is where some problems are. Here's how you clean those problems up. And if you do that, this is the outcome that you'll get. The coach comes in and says, that plan is great. But everything that is new or better requires a new and better version of you. And a coach helps you become that person so that you can carry out the new plan that you develop with a consultant. That's brilliant. That's a brilliant distinction. Amy, what do you have to add to what Shane just said about that? I want to give an example, like a practical example of what this looks like. Now, Shane and I have been working side by side now for almost five years. He and mm-hmm. I mentioned this yesterday and I was like, Wow. It has been plus. almost five Time years. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing we have found is my work as a consultant, if you just check your brain at the door, it's very simple. You just do the thing and the thing produces what you yeah. want it to. However, it's the human brain that is spinning on old habits that is stopping the execution of the Mm. very simple work that's gonna get very profound outcomes. So oftentimes we see clients get to the research phase. You and I have talked about this a lot, Sherman, get to the research phase of my consulting work that I do with them. And they start hearing input from a market that doesn't know them. And suddenly these things that they didn't realize bothered them are bothering them. Or suddenly they're starting to justify why they do something differently than what the market has demanded. But in order for them to actually move beyond there, they have to listen and ultimately they have to make a new decision because the decisions they had been making up until this point are not going to get them the outcomes they want. So I phone a friend, Shane McKenzie, coach Shane McKenzie. And lifeline. Lifeline. I will take the coach call. Thank you. And I very politely say, I cannot help you with this because I am not a coach. I can tell you what to do, but I cannot tell you why you cannot do it. But Shane can help you discover this internal obstacle that is keeping you from taking the next step. And I am telling you, the people that actually get on the phone with Shane, even if it's only for 30 minutes, Sherman, they start moving within three to four days. They're literally, Mm. their actions are starting down a whole different path. And that is the practicality because I can tell them in order for Mm. you to get this outcome, these are the steps you take. But in order for them to take those steps, new habits, new mindset, and really new discoveries about how you got yourself into this position begin to take form. And you need a coach to help you take new action. I love associating almost anything with food analogies. So. This reminds me of drinking bubble tea and those balls get caught in the straw. That's when you need the coach to remove the ball so that the flow of bubble tea can go up the straw. Well said. Great <laughs> illustration. Great illustration. Yes. That's Great it. illustration. That is exactly it. Shane is the bubble moving guy. Yeah. Or the ball buster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I have been described as the gentle hammer, like, (laughs) so very appropriate. Yeah. (laughs) So they go hand in hand is what you're saying. Uh, When, it sounds plain enough, but with somebody who's watching and listening to this, when is appropriate timing for each coach and Mm -hmm. consultant? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, it depends. 
it depends on where the person is getting stuck. They mm -hmm. have a place where they're blocking themselves from being even open to a plan, That's a right. new plan, a different plan. Are they just stuck in, this is the way we've always done it. This is the way it's supposed to work. And I'm not going to pick my head up. I'm just going to keep it down and hope it works out in the end. Are they at that place where mm -hmm. innovation is required, but they haven't become the person who can innovate yet? If so, I, a coach has to get them out of that mentality before a consultant will be able to provide them value. And we've already talked, I think, through this idea of no matter how ready you are, when you change direction, one of three things is going to happen. You're going to say this will never work. And that's going to be based off of all your past experience that you're hanging on bringing right. into that new change. Or you're going to start talking about how it's going to cost too much. It's going to cost too much money. It's going to cost me too much time. It's going to cost me too much energy. Cost, 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 cost. But that is really just a justification for not experiencing the pain that comes with mm -hmm. transformation of doing something new. It's mm -hmm. an excuse. And then the third thing that I think you'll experience is you'll get through those first two and you go, I knew that would work all along. I knew that would work. I knew we'd get there. But if you, when you start out that journey, you don't automatically go to the third option. You've got to work your way through the first two. And that's where a coach can help you, I think. So to me, it depends. I'm curious, yeah. Amy, what, what's your experience been? I think that when you observe that there is an external problem. Okay. So for my clients, it is. I've hired digital marketers and I still cannot get the outcome that I want. I've spent $18,000 over 12 months and I have eight emails to show for it and zero mm -hmm. clients. Or I have bought courses to learn how to write content better so that this algorithm will deliver me the results that I want. And I have gotten zero responses to my call mm -hmm. to action. Or it could be that they have plateaued. They hit a level of success and they have no clue where the success came from. They don't know how to duplicate it. And what they had been doing all along is no longer working, which is typically referrals. So these are some of the problems, the external problems mm. that my clients present with. If it is an external problem, that's what you're seeing. It's time to call a consultant. Call someone that can determine why the marketing didn't work, why the content isn't converting, why did the referral pool dry up? This is the time to call someone. If you are working with someone who has a proven process and you're not getting the same results as other clients that they're working with, then more than likely that is an internal problem and that is a coach that needs to step into the process. So when I'm talking to someone that is not yet a client, I'm listening. Do they have an external problem or is this an internal problem? Because I am really good at helping people externally, but I don't know how to coach. Do I use coach approach to much of my advisory work? Sure I do, but I have no training. I don't know how to go into the deeper crevices of your brain and your past experiences and future desires and help you solve that problem from the inside out. But I can tell you what to stop doing and what to start doing and how to get the outcome that you want externally. For me, it is the distinction of the mm -hmm. leader or the owner that says, I recognize I'm the problem. Okay, mm -hmm. then we need a coach. I recognize that our external efforts are not returning on their investment. It's time for a consultant. Yeah, that's good. I think one of the things that's kind of misunderstood, and it may be why people have a hard time pinning down, like what's the difference between a, a coach and consultant is mm -hmm. because there's not really this understanding of where there is similarity. And Amy, you touched on it mm -hmm. in that coaches have a process just like consultants have a process. So coaches aren't just making stuff up. Consultants aren't just making stuff up. They have a, mm -hmm. a process, but the purpose behind those processes is what makes it uniquely different. Are we talking something external consultant? Are we talking something internal coach? Both of them are going to re rely on proven processes to help you move towards your outcome. But what, where it is that you're stuck determines which of the two you need. And Sherman, on a podcast that Shane and I co-host called Don't Be Fooled, our closing line, like our exit line is the systems run your business. That's the external environment. But you run the systems. The human runs the systems. That is what Shane is talking about, mm -hmm. that we have to become the people 
that the next phase of outcome we want, we have to be able to manage that or we are never going to achieve what we really could achieve without that internal transformation. I thought you were going to tell me the slogan was don't be a fool. I will say that too. <laughs> Let me ask you this question, Amy, based on what you shared recently, which is profound. What is the one question that a business owner, a viewer, listener to this podcast is not asking, but they should be asking? Of a consultant or of themselves or of, themselves. of themselves, it should be, am I the problem or is there something externally that every time I go to do it, it's not returning on its investment. Now I will say that nine out of 10 times the two go hand in hand, but you must start by asking the question, is it me? because we're getting these results and I'm unwilling to change and explore why we're getting these results or is it we're just not getting results? If the answer is I'm not getting results, I'm willing, I'm open, I'm a modern type of leader. I know that I must evolve with technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that is your answer, then you need to talk to somebody like myself that can evaluate externally what's working and what's not working and tell you where to put the focus and the energy. But if you are being kept up at night internally with thoughts of, I might lose it all if I actually go down this path, or so-and-so is out to take my job or to overthrow my company, or what happens to my family? if I go this way, or what happens to me if I go this way, if that is where the mind is going is to how your decisions are gonna impact relationships, then you need a coach. So it's systems versus relationship type question. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Shane, same question for you. What yep. is one question they should be asking, but they're not asking? I think the question, the most difficult question and the highest priority question that any owner or leader should be asking themselves from a coach's perspective is what do I really want? What do I really want? Because what I've found is as people have success, they tend to want to expand that success. And what happens is everything becomes a priority. And when everything's mm -hmm. a priority, nothing is a priority. And so there's this juggling act that I see leaders that I coach where they're trying to have it all. And I just want you to know, listen close, <laughs> you cannot have it all. Mm. No. So you have to answer this question. What do you really want? Because it does separate the good stuff from the great stuff. And I know that's a phrase that's been around forever and it's overused, but when it comes down to it, we only have so much time, energy, and money, and we must prioritize all three of those things toward mm -hmm. what it is that we want most. Mm -hmm. And if we haven't ever done that before, it's a challenging exercise because we have competing priorities for those three right. things. And it really can make you, it can make you spin. And that's where I come in and I help you gain the clarity you need that. to be able to get to that answer. Yeah. And can I just draw a very clear distinction here? Did you notice how we both answered that question? <laughs> okay. Shane answered the question with a question. Yes. I explained why. <laughs> we need to ask the, uh, this certain question. And the very first question was, what is the problem? Is it me or is it something else? That is a very clear distinction right there between That's the right. behaviors of a consultant <laughs> and a coach. His question was turned inward. Mine was, well, where's the problem externally? <laughs> I love it. Great. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see both sides of it. Yeah, it is. Wow. Amy, any final words for our viewers about this topic? No, but if you, if anything that we have said today landed on you, especially on these internal struggles, then you need to call my friend Shane. Mm -hmm. That's what I will say. We'll make sure that we include his contact information. information. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, any final words before we end today's episode? I would say chances are you are at a place where you need either a coach or a consultant. If you're at a place where you are trying to maintain the status quo, I want you to know you are already in decline. The question is, is your business in decline or, or are you in decline? And that's what will help you decide where to start. Am I in decline or is my business in decline? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're working with a good coach or a good consultant, they're not going to try to be all things to all people. And they're going to tell you 
if you don't know the answer to that question, they're going to help you get there. And if they're not the right one to help you, they're going to turn you to a great consultant or they're going to turn you to a great coach. So be discerning as you look, but be looking because you cannot maintain the status quo. You will begin to decline. Always be looking forward. Chances are you need either a coach or consultant not to start this decline if it hasn't started already. Well said. That's amazing. Thanks, Shane. And thanks, Amy, for today's rich and meaty episode. Comparing coaches and consultants, we'll be sure to put information down in the podcast notes to be able to get in touch with both of you. Stay tuned for our next episode as we cover more business topics on the Amy Harrell podcast.